Hello and welcome to Amrita by the book. My name is Amrita. This is my booktube and today I've been tagged by Lana to do the friends book tag. Regulars will know how much I love Lana at this point and she and I are collaborating on a new video about MLM romances. So keep an eye out on both our channels. But before we get to that, let's do the tag. F is for friendship, a book with a strong friendship in it. You know there's only going to be one answer and that's the Thursday Murder Club. Regulars know that I am obsessed with this book and I have been since I read it in December 2020 but what I particularly enjoy about this book is that it has um, old people forming strong friendships. I'm constantly bombarded by tweets and you know just existential sad emoji faces of people who wonder if they're too old to, to form new friendships you know um, because so much of culture celebrates people forming strong friendships in their childhood in high school in college or at work you know when you're very young and you're like working up the ladder together but people don't really focus on friendships that you form later on in life. Now, I obviously am of a certain age. I don't know what my life will look like when I'm like 50, 60 years old. Maybe I too will find it very difficult to form friendships, but I have to say that I have formed really strong friendships in each decade of my life. And while I'm still friends with people that I went to kindergarten with, um, I have to say that some of my stronger relationships are with people whom I met at a later stage in my life. And that is for a number of reasons. I think like when you are a child and you're growing up and you meet friends and uh, you go through a lot of things together that are very form formative in your life and that does create really strong bonds. But also when you're older you have a better sense of who you are what your boundaries are what's important to you in your life especially at that moment and it's very easy to find people who not only reinforce your best view of yourself but also support you in becoming the better person that you want to be and hopefully you do want to be a better person all throughout your life i approach life as something that i am learning every single day and i just want to be better at whatever it is that i'm doing even if it's something as silly as a youtube channel that i made to better my mental health during a global pandemic and the friends that I have made through this channel have indeed made me a better person. They have introduced me to new ideas, to new books, to new avenues of exploration. And um, I, to me, like that's friendship. But coming back to the Thursday Murder Club, it's about people in their 70s and 80s finding new friends to whom they can be honest and who are supportive of them and who truly understand the difficulties of the position in which they find themselves. And it is so joyful and poignant to see these people come together. I really, really recommend this book. Um, I recommend it for a number of reasons and the friendship is one giant factor. Next is R for Real Life, a nonfiction book you want to read. I recently got an ARC for London and the 17th century and this is a book that I cannot wait to read because it is about all the events that shaped London during the 17th century which I mean if you are aware of British history at all you know the 17th is when a lot of things went down. There was civil war, Elizabeth died, plague, fire. All sorts of things went down in the 17th century and I lived in London for a while and one of my favorite activities was to go on these guided walks of the city and in fact I'm going to recommend a company if you're ever in London look up London walks they're this tiny company that do a really great job in taking you around the city and give you like a really good idea of its history. I highly recommend them. I use them all the time when I lived in London. And what I appreciate about London and about the English uh, when it comes to their city is that they are really good at keeping records. And 
and this particular author uses not just famous figures but also the records left behind by ordinary people to create a more holistic view of what life was like in London and what are the factors that contributed to its becoming the world city that it is today. 100 years is a long time for anybody and for any city but this particular century for this particular city was especially interesting and I cannot wait to read it. I is for indie author and I am going to recommend three of them actually and they're all friends to varying degrees. First up is M.L. Slack, um, who is a first-time author and uh, she's the babbling book on Instagram and um, her first book is I think called Inherited Sin and I just got a copy of it on Kindle Unlimited and if you have that then please do get a copy of her book. It's about a young woman who is left a secret by her late grandmother and now she's racing against time to solve the mystery. And it's fantasy, but it's also mystery, and it's also YA. Um, I mean, I think that this would fit a lot of people. Next is our very own Margaret Pinard, who is currently running a series of um, author talks. You know, like she's talking about her process, and that is one of the most difficult things for anybody to do. It's very easy for people to get super technical and to get too involved in what it is that they're explaining and um, find it rather difficult to convey all the things that goes into their writing but Margaret does an excellent job of it you should check out her channel I'll link it down below and you should check out her books which are available at your favorite bookseller and last up I'm also going to plug Andali Vajid who is a romance writer but she began by writing horror so if you go on Amazon and you look her up uh, you'll find a variety of things that she's written and she is incredibly interesting. She writes romances set in modern India. Um, she talks about young women from various parts of society and their love life and it is incredibly popular and again she is also available on Kindle Unlimited so um, check that out. E is for ending that made you scream. I'm really not a screaming kind of person. Um, I tend to be very placid. I don't know if you've noticed. But um, I think the last time I even screamed was because I was flipping through a encyclopedia because again, that's the kind of kid I was. I would read about serial killers on odd days and on even days, I'd leave through the nearest encyclopedia. And I was just opening the book at random and reading whatever that the page fell open to and I guess it was an article about chemicals um, polluting groundwater and causing mutant genes to appear in animals because the photo that they chose for the issue was um, a giant photo of a two-headed snake and I literally screamed out loud. I screamed and then I threw the book away from me. It's the only time that I've ever harmed a book and it's not my fault. But apart from that, I guess Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia, uh, which I read last year and it wasn't my favorite, but it was pretty good. I could see why other people would really love it. And um, in the end, when they explain like how the whole thing works, uh, that was, yeah, that left an impact. N is for a new book you can't wait to buy. I feel like when I have a book that I can't wait to buy, I just buy it. But I guess I'm trying to be a little bit better about it. So the book that I want to buy next is A Hall of Smoke by H.M. Long. And it sounds super interesting. It's fantasy. It's about this woman who is a priestess um, whose goddess tells her to murder this man and she refuses because, you know, like she doesn't know why. And uh, the, the goddess gets really mad and abandons her just in time for this barbarian or this enemy army to invade her land 
murder her entire village and now she's like the only person left in her religion and uh, she needs to somehow appease her goddess and win back her favor and find out what's happening. I really enjoy stories about women with their backs to the wall who are fighting things off. So yeah, this is a book that has been on my list for a while ever since I heard about it and it's out right now and um, if you're interested you should get it too. D is for a book that has dark themes. Okay, I don't think I've read anything more grimdark than Masquerade by Seth Dickinson. I've spoken about this series before, especially the first book in the series, which is called The Traitor, Baru Cormorant, and it's, it'll be linked in the cards up above. And um, it's basically the story of this young girl whose tiny island is subsumed by a great colonizing force and then she figures out that the best way to fight this colonizing power is not to do what her parents choose to do which is lead the resistance but to actually assimilate into the system of the colonizer and become so good at their own game that she can dismantle it from the inside but what she fails to consider is that she will need to pay for it like over and over and over again to the point where she herself doesn't know who she has become and it is one of the most gut-wrenching books that i have ever read the entire series like you think with each book that it can't get any worse emotionally for you and then you read the next one and it's even worse and you read the next one and it's even worse but you can't stop because it's so well written this is a book that challenges you to think like a lot of really great fantasy it talks about things that most of us might recognize as subtext but don't really spend a lot of time thinking about and uh, it's inescapable in the series and you're going to fall into one of two categories you're either going to love it like I do or you're going to hate it uh, which a lot of people do because it's honestly so painful but it's also really well written so if that's your brand of pain I highly recommend it S is for share the love and tag a few channels you love okay you know that this is my favorite part of any tag video i'm going to tag burner's bookish adventures i'm gonna tag book binge i'm gonna tag the story knot i'm gonna tag katie reads and rants and of course i'm gonna tag lady jane from lady jane books who i'm pretty sure has never seen the show Thank you all for watching. Thank you, Lana, for tagging me. You know I love you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I'll see you again next time. For more videos, please hit the subscribe button.